Bacha, what's on your radar? It's not really my radar. It's kind of all of our radar, right? Um, you all know by now that the FBI raided former President Donald Trump's private home, Mar-a-Lago, last week and retrieved 20 boxes. We all know now from the unsealed search warrant and property receipt that these boxes included a host of documents, including Roger Stone's executive grant of clemency, a leather-bound box of documents, two binders of photos, a handwritten note, info re-president of France, and 11 sets of classified documents. Some of these were marked top secret or TSSCI, which stands for top secret sensitive compartmented information, meaning documents that are supposed to be stored in a special facility due to their sensitive nature. You all know by now that the search followed a January visit by the National Archives, who retrieved 15 boxes, and you know that the Justice Department subpoenaed more records in the spring. Some of those were turned over by Trump's team in June, who Trump claims were fully cooperating, but investigators then believed that there were more documents that should not have been at Mar-a-Lago, which is what prompted the search. Now, the affidavit laying out what exactly convinced the judge that evidence for a crime might be found at Mar-a-Lago has not yet been unsealed. But the probable cause was related to supposed evidence of violations of federal law, including the Espionage Act, which bans gathering, transmitting, or losing defense information, as well as other statutes banning, concealing, removing, or mutilating documents and falsifying records in federal probes. That's it. That is all we know. In fact, it's all anybody knows, apart from a small number of people who work for the DOJ and the FBI and have read the affidavit. Contrary to what thousands of pundits and politicians want you to believe, this is all the information they have too. They do not know more than you, which means that they are not better equipped to judge whether or how big a security breach the documents seized represent, and whether or not they justify the historic norm-breaking step of raiding the home of a former and potential future president. It is just too soon to tell. And your guess is as good as anyone who is cosplaying as an expert on Twitter or cable news. There has been other reporting from unnamed sources, like a Washington Post report that claimed that classified documents relating to nuclear weapons were among those sought by the FBI at Mar-a-Lago. There has been reporting from Fox News that the records seized were covered by attorney-client privilege. There has also been plenty of breathless conjecture from the producers who brought you the Steele dossier and the rest of the Russia Gate hoax like an NBC News report claiming, absent any data, that the documents retrieved from Mar-a-Lago could include names of CIA sources in Moscow, and a slate piece arguing that because the Espionage Act was named in the warrant, this implies that we're well past simple mishandling of classified information and now entering the possible realm of foreign nations being given classified information to give them an advantage over the United States. Meanwhile, over on the right, Republicans have been calling for abolishing the FBI and some even for civil war. When did liberals, who once knew just what the FBI was capable of doing to people like Dr. King, become the side of placing absolute faith in the feds, the side cheering on the use of the Espionage Act of all things? And when did the right become the side of abolishing the FBI? It's just the latest example of how Trump continues to scramble the categories of American public life, turning Democrats into pro-war, anti-Russia hawks and Republicans into anti-war, anti-trade populists. Now he's got the left cheering on prosecutorial overreach and the Espionage Act and the right calling for defunding law enforcement. What a feat. Contrary to what the left-wing media wants you to believe, it is simply too soon to tell whether former President Trump put national security at risk with the documents he had at Mar-a-Lago. Certainly no one would argue that Roger Stone's grant of clemency alone would have been enough to justify a raid on a private citizen's home and office to say nothing of a former president. As for all the documents labeled top secret, there were over 4 million Americans with security clearance as of 2017, though not, of course, at the same level of the president. And as the Wall Street Journal pointed out in a weekend editorial, it has been 18 months since Mr. Trump left the White House. So why the sudden urgency that required Monday's full-scale search? If the documents were serious nuclear secrets, you'd think the Justice Department would have demanded their return as soon as that was known. 
Still, contrary to what the right-wing media wants you to believe, Trump does seem to have kept a whole lot of records that didn't belong at Mar-a-Lago, many of which, true, he returned, but not before being subpoenaed. And the president didn't take the proper steps to declassify these documents while still in office. Also, contrary to what the right has claimed, there seems to be no evidence that the raid is part of a larger coordinated Democratic plot to bar Trump from office, given that the head of the FBI, Christopher Wray, is a, a Trump appointee. Still, that doesn't mean I don't understand why people think this is part of a larger plot. It's clear that Democratic elites feel powerless to defeat Trump at the ballot box, and most would do anything in their power to bar him from running again, moral or otherwise. Many could scarcely conceal their delight at last week's events, just barely hiding their smug elation at the, quote, delicious development under a patina of disapproval, although some hit it better than others. One of Trump's greatest gifts has always been his ability to make his political en enemies match him flaw for flaw in a race to the bottom. But Trump has never mattered as much as what he symbolizes, an abandoned and demoralized multiracial working class whose communities and families have been destroyed by the elites of both parties and who then have to suffer through the smug condescension of the very people who shipped their futures off to China. To many of those people, there is something inevitable about the FBI targeting Trump over what might turn out to be a red herring, because they can imagine that happening to them, not for having access to classified documents, but for being targeted unfairly by the elites of the liberal media who sneer at them day in and day out, or the liberal elites who control our social media platforms and kick them off for saying things about COVID that turn out to be true six months later. Many on, on the right have used Trump as a shortcut to getting votes from working class voters, forgetting that Trump the man is smaller than the righteous rage he came to be an avatar for. Meanwhile, on the left, instead of trying to understand these people who were once the Democrats' base, liberal and leftist elites choose to mock and dehumanize them. As President Obama advisor Ben Rhodes tweeted last week as the raid became public news, the strangest thing about this epoch of American history will always be that tens of millions of grown-ups decided to form a cult-like devotion to, of all available people, Donald Trump. Apparently for the left, the working class traded in clinging to their guns, Bibles, and bigotries for clinging to Trump. How childish of these alleged grown-ups to vote for someone who promised to overturn NAFTA, and did, who promised to stem illegal immigration, and did, who promised to get unemployment down, and did. So often when you scratch at claims of expertise, this is what you'll find lurking just beneath the surface, a smirking condescension that makes insight impossible and leads grown-ups to believe in a P-tape. That is the real lesson of the raid on Mar-a-Lago, at least for now until we get more information. The experts have nothing on you. Read everything for yourself, question your biases, do your homework, and be skeptical of claims of expertise, and never forget to have compassion for the other side. So where are you, Robbie, on all of this? No, those are very wise words, Bacha. I, <laughs> I agree with almost everything you said. I think, um, you know, on the question, though, of the, the love of Trump himself, I guess I will not def to defend Ben Rhodes. I would never do that. But <laughs> the preference for Trump um, uh, versus, um, among the right when there is no alternative, right, I understand. Of course, they prefer Trump. Trump is implementing the policies that, that the new Republican Party, the new right, wants implemented. So of course, they would prefer him to, what, to, to Joe Biden, to Hillary Clinton. The issue will be, well, do they still prefer Trump to plausible alternatives like Ron DeSantis or whoever else is emerging and is clinging to Trump? It, it, I think it, it's becoming or it looks more like a cult of personality now as it endures, where it's clearly like harming the Republican Party's chances of enacting these policies in the future. As I mean, we're looking at some of these races, right? Arizona just went down the line for the hardcore, hardest hardcore Trump candidates, possibly to their detriment. It, they're much more likely to lose, I think, than the than the more 
typical Republican candidates. It's not, you know, it's not the most conservative state ever. It's, it's a very down the middle state. So the question becomes, is there such a worship of Trump that it's actually harming the, the goals of the, these people? And that's why I, I see why you would say, well, it's some kind of cult of personality. Now, maybe that will will go away. Maybe, you know, Ron DeSantis will run and all those people will flock to DeSantis. And then you'll say, no, there isn't really a cult of personality. But that's I think that's where that that kind of framing comes from. It, do, it does seem to be a preference for Trump himself, the person, the individual, beyond all else, that I do find baffling at some times. Not given, of course, they support Trump over, over the left, over Democrats, but over other Republicans who would, who would do the same thing and seem to have fewer faults, like would not have boxes of, of unauthorized documents in there, even if you don't care, even if you say it's stupid and the FBI shouldn't go after him for it, it's still a self-inflicted wound to have done this, right? I mean, I, I, I guess, well, I'll just give you one example. My friend Jim, who's a bartender in his 60s, lives in New Jersey. You know, we used to talk endlessly about Trump. You know, he, he supported his policies, but he always said to me, you know, his character always bothered him. You know, he would say yeah. to me, you know, a true leader rises above. That was a yeah. really... And then I was talking to him the other day about this raid on Mar-a-Lago, and he said to me, now I'm all in for him. And he said, just to stick it to them. And I think that that feeling that Trump represents in his messiness, he represents, um, you know, the average American's fear that he too could be targeted by these people for having made a mistake. DeSantis will never have that because he doesn't make mistakes, right? He's, he's not messy. And so in a way, I hear what you're saying. Well, he could get more push down the road policy wise but at the same time there was something about Trump's I just don't care about what anybody you know in the sort of elite spheres thinks that actually gave him leeway I mean it, it, uh, could you picture DeSantis waging a trade war with China I can't I have to say you know he's just too careful to take a mm. step like that and there's too much evidence on either side of whether it's actually going to be effective whereas for Trump it was like oh is this what the experts think is a bad idea I'm going all in for it and I think that there is something about that that it look I don't think people vote against their interests. And I think that there we have gotten so used to saying, oh, you know, this one is better for your interest. That one is better for your interest. They know who's in their interests. And sometimes sticking it to the elites who destroyed their communities and destroyed their lives is very much in their interests. Well, I think we could really, really stick it to Team Blue by nominating someone <laughs> who's less likely to, to lose than Donald Trump. Just my, just my view of the matter. Uh, thank you so much, Batya. And I'll have my radar in just a minute. Looking forward.